Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sonoma Raceway for the Classic Grand Prix World Championship Series here on Glacier TV. Will Vincent, David Ward and Marius Gollenbeck in the booth will be bringing you live footage from Sonoma Raceway in just a couple of minutes time. But before we get to that, Marius, um, Sonoma Raceway is a very tough and technical track. Yeah, absolutely. And that as well. Hello from me and... Well, safe to say this is the eighth round of the season. We've got 12 rounds and we've had a couple of these technical racetracks so far. We've had Brent Hatch as an opener, but we've also seen a very spectacular race at Interlagos as well as for the classic on Circuit de spa Francorchamps. So we're definitely going for the peak of the season right now. And next week it is uh, most part, which is basically the exact opposite of what it is today. And David, you've done many a race here at Sonoma Raceway. It's been called many different names over its period of its life, be it Sears Point, be it Infineon Raceway. Now it's Sonoma, think outside the Oval, but still is a really difficult racetrack, especially those first two corners. And from a standing start, these guys have got to be very careful on that opening lap. Oh, definitely. Going up that hill into the first corner, the long sweeping uphill right, and then all of a sudden, uh, sorry, long sweeping left, and then all of a sudden it just jinx right um it's so difficult to get the car under control there the undulations here is really going to affect the car's handling um the carousel is going to be one of the main um fast sections as, as it comes sweeping down and there isn't that many uh, overtaking uh, opportunities here so the drivers are going to find it really really difficult to make uh, some nice clean passes going to be tough to pass it's going to be also a very fast race here as well we expect lap times to be in the region of about one minute 21 seconds on the race pace qualifying and we've got 16 guys in the race here today and when qualifying Nikola Drenkovic set the fastest lap of the day with one minute 19.186 and as we've seen all season long we've got those three or four drivers out front today it's Nicholas Drenkovic going up Fritchard Tom and Megleck and Thomas Crowson, they've got themselves a big gap, Marius, to the rest of the field. So we've got four cars out front. That middle pack, however, is also very closely separated. Yeah, it's been like that all season long. It's basically been Linquist dominating most of the races here. He is still the championship leader here. Gernot Fritsch, however, a seasoned veteran here, he's got him beat by 2.2 tenths. And on this challenging track, that is a whole lot and definitely worth more than on other tracks. But then, um, yeah, it's getting closer and closer. Fritsch is second uh, with a 119.4. And then he's got a couple of these strong guys right behind him. He's got Tomo Meglic in third, Tomas Kodron in fourth, and Luca Zanetti in fifth. And they are still following up, up uh, following him up close, so um, it isn't really that far down with a grid Hello. of yeah, just about 16 cars up here. And uh, there's not really that much room to drop, but not really that much room to gain. So I don't think we'll see much passes here. However, the guys will still be fighting for any position. So yeah, you talked about the first six drivers in this field. We'll run through the complete starting grid here for the Lotus Grand Prix of Sonoma. Nicholas Lengvik is getting pole position, that 1 minute 19.186. A three tenth of a second gap to Gernot Fritscher, who lines up in the second position. So in Megalek in third, Thomas Codlin in fourth. Luca Zanetti in the fifth position with Andreas Valencius in the sixth spot. Nuno Maria in seventh position with Andre Ventura in eighth. Mikhail Gut Duganon in at ninth with Gary Thiel in tenth. Then Tapano Leniota in eleven. Robert Pogoni in twelfth. Marco Kikila in 13th, Stefan Ellis 14th, Paul Mills in 15th, and then Barry West winds out your starting field. And David Lingvich uh, always looking good out front. Gernot Fritsch has always struggled though in that track, and he always seems to drop back early on in these races. I'm wondering if today he might try a different strategy to try and get up close to Lingvich early on. I think if he can start battling with Lingvich in just make him like watching the mirrors like really really push the issue I think he could upset his rhythm and like we could have a real good race on our hands um, but don't um, don't discount Tomo in this because you know he's not too far far behind uh, the two leaders so I mean it's it's gonna be lengthless to lose at the end of the day isn't it and don't forget, we've got 16 cars in this field here today. They'll be racing for 25 laps in total. Standing start, always the order of the day here in the Classic Grand Prix World Championship Series. And don't forget also, next week, Glacier TV bringing you its first race of the 2013 World Championship Series of Road Racing. Start time for that will be at 2pm GMT next Saturday. 
and the cars lining up on the grid at the moment. Lingvis in that first position. And then you're going to have Fritcher in second, Meglick in third, Croston in fourth, Lucas Zanetti fifth, Andres Lynches in sixth. And we are waiting now for the rest of the cars to come up onto the grid. The most likely to go on the Ironton.com Gantry stay there. But now they're green, going racing here at themselves up the hill into turn number one and it looks like a clean start by all Marians. Yeah, very clean, but now up the hill Bruno Moera with a tiny mistake. They're costing him two positions right away and that's exactly what you don't want to do. It's going so steep uphill if you afford a mistake right there and he's another Just position you know, down. I can't so Valentino, Ventura and Dunyan all past Ventura an here and uh, he's still struggling. Sorry, that is Moera of course. He's still struggling. Uh, and it looked like Stephen Ellis and uh, Barry Westhard are coming together on the first corner up the hill. He just got a little bit sideways. Um, so that's pretty much the end of Barry's race. But is he still going round? Uh, yes, he He's is. He's still going round, but he is right at the rear of the field. Meanwhile, Nicholas Lingvist is out the head. Now in this tricky section, they go left and right. Then a little bit of gap, then left again. You see that car now thing all the way to the right-hand side. Huge cornering speed here. You're taking this section at about 145 miles an hour as you come into the final right hand sweeper before the final corner of this racetrack. So remember, race has many different layouts. We use the one all the way to all here. And David, importantly, you can't get that last corner wrong because you've got a very big tire barrier ready to eat you up if you get it wrong. Yeah, there is no runoff area there. I mean, from the hairpin all the way through the S's, you're pretty much flat out. You're not lifting whatsoever, so it's uh, it's just a kind of a drag race down. But again, there's no passing opportunities, not unless you can really tuck up behind someone and you know kind of just throw it down the inside, which is uh, it's a bit of a brave move. And Gernot Fritcher in that second position, Marius, he's already 1.7 seconds behind Nicholas Lingfish. He's got himself about a second gap over Tom Meglick right now. So he's still in that kind of no man's land that he's been in all season long. But Lingvich, a great start by him. And right now he's got himself almost a two second gap. Yeah, that's exactly what we've seen from him all season long. He's basically got the starts exactly right, then jumped away from the field, just nailed the first couple of laps, and you've said it exactly. You will not get much overtaking opportunities, but once you're off in the distance, I mean, literally two seconds, he's off in the distance, and uh, there's not really that much overtaking opportunities, so to have any of those, you need to be way up close, and with two seconds ahead, he's pretty much got his right play take out a couple of percentage of risk I guess. So your top five has his after two laps going to be scored complete at the line. Nicholas Lingvich, your race leader, as he comes past the start finish line once again, he's going to set himself a 1 minute 20.1 there and improving that gap now to 2.5 seconds over so going on Fritcher. The gap between Fritcher and Meglek in third, that is 1.5 seconds. A further four tenths of a second back is Thomas Crowe's on it in fourth. Luca Zanetti in fifth, also right there with him. So we've got ourselves right now, um, guys, about a four-car pack, all the way from Meglik down to Blenches, all within a couple of seconds of each other. Yeah, that's right. I mean, those guys are pretty much running nose to tail at the moment. The, uh, the aero on this on this car, it does it does have an effect. So as they get a little bit closer, it, it's going to be tougher for them to to get to get the. Um, to get the downforce into the corners um, so I, I, it's so hard to pass around here I, it's going to be it's going to take a do or die move by one of these four who's uh, chasing and Marius as they're coming down the F section once again importantly they can't use too much of their tyres too early on yeah absolutely not and David just been saying that I mean they are involved in, in the aerodynamic business but Still, these cars are, are mostly tyres. I mean, you've got the huge rear tyres as we see an attack coming from Valentius into the last turn, but just not close enough for that. And this is just all tyres, and comparing them to modern Formula 1 cars, where it's mostly um, yeah, aerodynamic, really, um, it is all tyres here. And um, if you don't watch your tyres, I mean, the race is just 25 minutes, uh, 25 laps long, which is about um, 35 to 40 minutes on a regular basis. So it's not that challenging, but still, if you punish these tyres early on, you might run into trouble in the last couple of laps, and that's exactly where the mistakes happen. We've seen that so often this season, and I mean, these guys are following up so close, half a second of gap, one little mistake, put the wheel on the grass and the braking here, or rather dirt, 
and you ride off and you won't just lose one position, you won't just lose two, you will drop another four or five positions so easily that you just need to keep the concentration up and you need to just pussyfoot these tyres all the way through. And David, let's, we'll talk about Brands Hatch, for example, early on in the season a little bit. Try to be your top ten, Lingley still is leading the way. That's going to put Paul Apps in the books at the conclusion of this one. Fritcher in second, Meglek in third, Brooklyn fourth, and Effie fifth. Andrew Lynch is in the sixth position, Andrew Ventura in eighth, Gary Till in ninth, and uh, um, sorry, Gary Till in eighth, and we get ninth. Mikael Dugan running out your top ten. So far, we've got two guys scored to lap down, Paul Mills in the number 12 car is currently scored as one lap down, and then Barry West is two laps down after those incidents at the start of the race. But David, uh, Marius came up with a very good point there with tyres and the way that you lose the last couple of laps that could be factor. Remember, we can turn our attention to uh, Brands Hatch early on in the season, and that was a critical factor those last couple of laps. Most tyres went away. Some drivers lost the race, some drivers managed to gain a lot of position, and it really is going to be a critical factor once into those last five laps. Yeah, Brands Hatch, it was a little bit of a race of attrition in, in some respects because. As we said earlier, one mistake there and you're going to be uh, into the barrier. But also, yeah, the tie situation there, a lot of the drivers went really hard early on and it was quite surprising to see them make that gap. But then they were just reeled in at the end uh, by the people who looked after their tyres. So you see they're currently working themselves now on lap number 5 of 25 here at Sonoma Raceway. Well, Vincent, Mario gone back and David Ward in the booth. Nicholas Lingvich has now got that gap up to 3.5 seconds in the battle for the race lead. Gunnar oh. Fritsch has not been able to get much of a gap for a mega um, than what he had. Go on. Set has just been uh, passed by uh, Valentius. Um, and it's a great pass actually. And this is down in the S section of the racetrack. Valentius was able to get a very good run. I'm having a see actually whether Zanetti got wide. Yeah. He did go a little bit wide. Got himself onto the gravel a little bit. And then Valentius going around the outside. Then getting the inside line into the final part of that set for Marius, a big bold move. He's himself now up into the fifth position. Yeah, a bold move, you say, but it's uh, exactly the move you need. And Valencia has, uh, has been looking quite racy for the last couple of laps, in fact, from the start on. And he's just been pushing on to Zanetti, and um, a little mistake is enough. And we've seen um, yeah, just that little mistake just happen. And back to the battle around position 8 to 10 that is Gary Thiel leading that pack three-way fight Nuno Moira after the big mistake at the start dropped from 7 to 9 already made one position up to Michel Dunior but still only running in 9 and that is definitely yes that he would have imagined from today and that's the important thing overtaking at this track can be incredibly difficult Maria in that number 11 car we've seen some good speed from him all season long consistently battling to get himself into the top five and in fact, it's one of the number top five finishes this season as well. But that 11 car right now in the dirty air of Gary Till is suffering a little bit. And David, perhaps he's waiting for a couple of laps to try and find it the time to pound. Um, he's right now got up a four second gap to that pack ahead of him. But if Gary Till's tires start going up, he might be looking for the driver ahead to make a mistake rather than trying to push the issue too hard, too early on. Yeah, I do think like, that the race is like split up into their own individual groups uh, with pace wise but I don't know maybe maybe Teal can surprise us and like jump that gap up and uh, catch up to uh, Ventura but I highly doubt it um, but that uh, proved me wrong prove you wrong I tell you what he probably will try in his very least missing three way battles we say for 8th, ninth, and 10th positions on the race track we've also now actually got to pile Lenny Oto involved in this battle as well so it's a 4 car battle Lenny Oto started this race in the number 4 car in the 11th position that is where he's running and Lenny Oto has never had really that great start in he's been able to pick his way through traffic pretty well however going to turn our attention back out to the um, race lead however Nicholas Langvis that last time by did a 1 minute 20.546 um, and in fact that's not even his fast lap of the race that was set on lap number 2 at 1 minute 20.1 and if you put that that would put him in mid grid Marius for the actual race and he's doing that in race pace yeah it's absolutely amazing that's uh, just the, the killer pace I can't even imagine that he's taking out a single percent of risk in that um, Gannett Fritcher right behind him is already going a little bit quicker than Tomo Maglic in average 
Um, and he's um, only running about high 1 minute 20s. He is running them very, very um, consistently, however. So the last five laps have all been within um, yeah, just over 1 tenth. And Tomo Meklic behind him has run a 20.7, so he has got the pace for that. But he's also dropped to the 21s again. However, Nicholas Lindquist at the lead of the pack is just running these 1 minute 20 mid all the way. And he's not done one worse lap than a 1 minute 20.5. And at the current state of the race, he's not in the need of risking anything. He's extended the gap to about five seconds to Gareth Fritcher. And he's, I'm, I'm not saying he's got this safe because there's still a whole lot of laps to go. But this is uh, yes. the important portion of making a victory today. Uh, yeah. But uh, the battle for ninth place with uh, Gary Tua has uh, kind of been hotting up. They've been uh, concertining uh, through the first section. So I can see uh, someone That's getting a little bit brave and that. maybe throwing it down the inside very soon. So they come through the S's, they're really tightly packed together. Yeah, Maria's actually closed that gap up now to about four car lengths on the racetrack. That last time by did a 1 minute 21.2, um, compare that to a 1 minute 21.8 there for Gary Teal. But at this stage of the race, Maria really does have the speed. You won't really get too much of an opportunity down to the hairpin unless you really are the last of the late breakers, but it's so risky down there. As we talked about earlier on, it's dirty offline, and also, if you get that car off the racing uh, line, you end up pretty much into the tie barrier, and your day could be done. Also hotting up right now, the back of two Thomas Quantum and Andrew Valencius, just as they say that, Valencius goes a little bit squirrely, coming out of turn number two to drop back a little bit. So we've got ourselves right now two good battles on the racetrack, between Thomas Quantum in fourth and Andrew Valencius in fifth, and also, Nina Maria and Gary Till, eight and nine, but right now, Maria, it's that Maria and Till battle does look like it's the better battle on the racetrack. Yeah, it does, and um, it's exactly the, the situation these guys are. I mean, Gary Till, he's uh, the number nine ranked I rating guy in this field, so he's pretty much in the middle of the sixth. Uh, um, he started from break. tenth, he's made up two positions just by that, and I mean, he's basically done everything right so far. He's benefited from the little misfortune of Nomoera, which he's got exactly in his oh. neck as Nomoera attacks oh. him. And that's been a bold move, an absolute dive bomb gone massively wrong. And Nuno Moera takes out Gary Thiel there. He's completely hit his rear. And that is, um, I'm safe to say, almost or very surely ended Gary Thiel's race. The car still looks okay, but he's been dropped several positions down. And that is definitely, um, yeah, the race almost being ended by Nuno Mozera for Gary Thiel there. Very, very, very misplaced move. Yeah, we'll try and get the Glacier TV Super Slow Mo Cam up on that momentarily, but just having a look for it myself, um, Maria, he did just plant that car down the inside line, and Thiel had already started turning into the corner. This is the important thing. Thiel had already pretty much turned into the corner before Maria had even got there. So we talk about sometimes these incidents, you know, 50-50, you're going to have to say that, David. That was pretty much all the rear there. He tried to plant his way through, got it completely wrong. He might have tried out, he might have outbroken himself, but that does look like a classic dive bomb as we plays up on your screen. Now. Yeah, that was a um, ridiculous move, to be honest. I was not sure what was going on there. Maybe he had a, a, a brain fart moment or something, but Teal must be absolutely fuming at that because. He was just, he had it comfortable, you know, there was no, there was no need to come from that far back, not, it's they were just ridiculous, so, oh well, it's unfortunate for Teal, so hopefully there's, doesn't look like there's too much damage on his car and he'll be able to uh, pick up the pace and uh, catch up to some of the slower guys that have already passed him. And you've uh, seen the replay, yep. you've seen the replay, and you've just seen, I mean, basically, he hasn't been breaking too much later, but then he's just noticed the gap is there, but he's still been these two car lengths behind. He's basically lifted the brakes once again. He's gone in deep, and he's just been all the way committed to the turn at that point. Nothing to do for Gary Teal than looking in the mirrors, opening the steering, and then boom, it's already been too late. Contact between these two guys. Nuno Moera seems to got out of it to relatively good. He's still running about four and a half seconds off the pace. Gary Thiel, however, at 10 seconds off pace last lap. So both of them definitely heard from that as Moira is going massively sideways at the moment. And I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be surprised if these guys are completely retiring from this race. Yeah, and it's going to be difficult for them. And unfortunately for Gary Thiel, that was pretty much no fault of his own at all. 
And also putting in the rear of that car is all forms of squirty at the moment. He's fallen back behind Pano Lanioto and also Michel Duganon. So now down into the 10th position at the moment. We're approaching the halfway point of this race, however. Nicholas English is going to put 11 laps in the books. This time by now the 6th second gap over Gernot Fritscher in that battle for the second position. Megalik is still in third, Cotton is still in fourth, and Valencia is still running out your top five. Um, and, Marius, at this stage of the race, this is where we're going to see the first signs of how hard these guys have been using the tyres. We'll kind of get that tyre smoke coming out, especially from the front tyres as they come into the corner, and you just see those big plumes of smoke as they come through, and as they stamp them to the brakes. The drivers with the biggest amount of smoke coming out, generally they're the ones that's abusing their tyres the most, mainly because of the fact you just see it, the tyres start giving up after a while. They stop giving you that grip, and that's when the car starts going sideways, especially in these really fast high-speed corners. Yeah, and you've, you've been saying it. I mean, we've been talking about tyre degradation and just um, yeah, basically handing the tyres all the way right and just watching for the signs of them. And we are halfway through the race almost. We're in lap 11 right now of 25. And if you notice any signs, um, later on, this is the period where you want to have changed your driving style. So if you notice in the, in the last five laps that, oops, I've maybe overdriven the rears, I've maybe just locked up the fronts a couple of times too much, it's already too late. And this is the phase where you could still yeah, shape these things right. I mean, from the beginning, you should be tire conserving and just uh, try to watch the tire wear. But this is the stage of the race where you need to watch especially the rear tires or you will run into trouble later on. However, Nicholas Linquist still isn't looking for his tires that much. Another 1 minute 20.6 the last time by. Gernot Fritscher also put a 0.6 coming across the line this time, 1 minute 20.8. And that's the important thing, actually, you know, Fritcher was able to kind of match some of the times that Linkwich has been doing. But Linkwich has got such a gap now, he really can just keep that car going. And we're having a look at Linkwich's times, actually. His fastest time, 1 minute 20.1. His slowest time, taking away the lap one, because you had that standing start, a 1 minute 20.6. They're all within half a second of each other, David. And that's that consistency that you really need if you're going to be a race winner. And, and in Linkwich's English case, a multiple race winner. Well, yeah, you know, you need to uh, having that consistency is uh, what's going to make you fast. But he's fast and consistent, so he's got the best of both. Um, I'm just watching this battle for fourth position between uh, Kostrom and uh, uh, Meglik. They've uh, they've been turning and throwing for the last uh, few laps now, and it looks like uh, Meglik's going to he's, he's a lot quicker. Uh, and Kostron and just wants to try and keep it tidy and see if he can actually make a, a passing move somewhere on this track. Yeah, and it's interesting as well, these two, they have to go into and throw, but it shows again how difficult these two are to take. In certain parts of the race, Kostron's clearly been blocking some of Megalek. That dirty air, that kind of, that dirty air effect, where especially these high speed corners, especially, Coming up turn number one and two is a key example of that. Once you try and turn into the corner, you just get this wave of understeer. You've got to brakes a little bit early, you have to be at the plate getting onto the throttle, all because of the fact you lose that kind of front end grip, which really does drive these cars around the race track. As Cod's on there getting a little bit aero loose actually as he comes up that uphill chicane. But Marius, this is safe for Cod's up, he's just got to hope that he can carry on putting that pressure onto my Megalic. But Megalic, all season long, he's been really good and getting himself consistent finishes and he's really good at actually withstanding that pressure. Yeah, absolutely, and he's worked himself up quite an eye rating here. The third in the ratings here behind Fritscher and Lindquist. So, um, yeah, he's not only a seasoned veteran, but he's also just been posting these uh, consistent, I, I don't want to say mid-pack, but definitely front mid-pack results. He's also got a couple of podium results here, and that's exactly what he's been aiming for today. And um, third place so far, good race. Only four and a half seconds behind Gernot Fritscher, so he's not really that far off. And could still benefit from a mistake from Fritscher. However, Thomas Kodrom behind him, half a second down, and looking very racy and taking a look at the lap times once again. He's also in the high one minute 20s, actually posted the second fastest lap of his race in the last time by. Watching for the left time now, he's lost a little bit to Meglic, 0.2 of a second down again, but he's looking a little bit quicker, just about 1 to 2 tenths. Uh, but we may not forget Audrius Valentius is behind these guys, and he is right after Nicholas Lindquist, currently the fastest guy in the field. Don't forget, coming up in just about half an hour's time, 
the iRacing.com Proto GT Challenge Series here live on Glacier TV. 65 minutes worth of racing with three car classes from perhaps one of the most famous circuits in all of North America. That is Road America and that will be at 5.30 p.m. GMT here live on Glacier TV. Meanwhile, we're working ourselves on lap number 15 of 25 here in the Classic Grand Prix World Championship Series race from Sonoma Raceway. And Nicholas Linglish is still your race leader. That gap now up to seven seconds over Tom Meglek in third. Meglek's been involved in this battle with Thomas Croton pretty much since those lights went green. And he's got Andres Valencius also kind of in the mix. Lucas is actually falling off the pace right now, as is Andrew Ventura just a little bit. So right now, it's really only a three-way battle. And David, importantly for Valencius, he's kind of lucky because if any of those two drivers makes a mistake, he's going to pick up a position of his own. And he's just right now playing that waiting game. I, I don't know, you know, he came back up behind the Costum really fast and he's like, he's, gain, he's gained on these guys, but this has given uh, Crosden a, a kind of like uh, a kick up the arse, if you like, to, to like get a move on as well because he's going to be in a position soon where he's going to be trying to attack Meglik and then also defend his position as well so he, he doesn't want to be hanging around too much and it's getting to that point in the race now where if you've saved tyres go for it if you haven't then you're kind of uh, a little bit screwed and taking a look especially at the relation between the qualifying and the race We've often talked about how difficult it is to get that qualifying lap done here and how different it is from the actual race pace. And it's been proven once again because Audios Valenti is currently the second fastest guy on the track, just um, yeah, just ahead of Gannot Fritsch in fact, and just behind Nicholas Lindquist is still posting the fastest lap times of the race. But he's been starting from the sixth position. He's been only having the sixth fastest time here. 0.7 of a second slower than Linquist and 0.4 than Fritcher and he's still been able to manage the fastest lap times of the race repeatedly now and comparing them to Fritcher's, Meglich and Kozjan's times who are right ahead of him he's for the past couple of laps been always quicker than the guys however he has caught up now he's one second behind these guys and his times have dropped again so as soon as he catches up as soon as he gets this little error loss portion he's dropping again but we've seen it when he is in clean air definitely got the pace to go right up to the top three and that's where I think his aim will be today nine more laps to try out yeah and that is exactly what we've been talking about and it shows just how prevalent the aero push is at this racetrack some circuits you know which are a lot more stop start less high speed corners you might be able to get away being closer to these drivers but here you've got so many sections of the racetrack where you really need that mechanical and aerodynamic grip for example turn on one and two and you go up the hill and then flick that car to the right hand side when you're working yourself through that 180 degree carousel and also through this um, chicane section of the racetrack as well these high speed exits really need to have that grip on your car and we've been able to see this you know Crudson's been stuck behind Meglik and Valencius has been stuck behind Crudson and in fact Lucas Anetti is just kind of keeping with them as well he's a couple of seconds back but I'm intrigued to see whether or not uh, but Zanetti will catch this pack before the end of the race. Last time by did a 1 minute 20.3 compared to the 1 minute 20.7 there of Andrew Valencius. That actually goes on very sideways. So another 1 minute 20.7. Zanetti that time also did a 1 minute 20.7. So Valencius falling on now a second map behind Crodstom. But this is still the best battle we have on the racetrack right now. Bruno Maria, to give you an update on him, he is still going on the racetrack. He's in that 10th position after his incident with Gary Teal. Teal is also involved right now in a battle with Robert Pagorni. In the battle for the 11th position on the racetrack. Pagorni last time in 1 minute 22.4. Compare that to the 1 minute 21.8 as Gary Teal going to look down to the inside line. And David is always so brave to make a move coming up the hill in turn number one. Very difficult place, but it looks like Gary Teal got a little bit of help there from Pagorni who knew that Teal was a lot faster at that point in time. Yeah, there was no point in holding him, uh, hold him up and might as well follow Teal and he might learn a few things, but as you always do when you follow the faster guys. Um, but yeah, that was a, a brave move by Teal, but also great driving from uh, Robert there. So we're up to ourselves with less than 10 laps left to go here at Sonoma. Pagani now down into the 12th position Linkless actually, that gap between himself and Gunnar Fritcher is starting to close. Fritcher last time, a 1 minute 20.7. He did his 
fast lap of the race, 1 minute 20.216, one lap ago. Nicholas Ling was fastest lap of the race, that is still set on lap number two. Oh. Importantly, Marius, it's only half a tenth slower. Uh, yeah, Meglik and, uh, is really getting under pressure now from uh, Crosden here. He's just, it seems like he's all over the back of him. Um, he had a real good run uh, off the hairpin all the way up to turn one and he's just stuck on his uh, gearbox there as they go through the carousel. Um, if he's, I say, if he's within that distance when they come down to the uh, hairpin, he should uh, throw it down the inside for good. He's trying to go. Oh. Now they're always going to do this. Oh, oh my God, they touch again. It's always a repeat performance there of what we saw in Maria earlier on. This time, both of them carry on. Oh. I tell you what, that was scary. No, and uh, it looks like uh, Meglik has uh, went into the barrier there and just, just might, parked it. He must have got some damage there. Now, so having, having a look back, we'll get the replay. Uh, Marius will get the replay up on the screen momentarily. But having a look, and it does look as though the rear of that car just hits the front suspension there of Meglik. And Marius, we'll get you to talk through it. And in fact, we have the... We have just lost connection with Marius and Pandine, but we'll have a look through it momentarily. Replay coming up on your screen any second now. And for Meglik, it did look as though that he got himself into, came into the corner, and he didn't protect that inside line. He kind of turned into the corner, but still left that inside line open. And this is the difference between that and Maria. But that time, it just looked as though that crodged them as it's coming up on your screen now, Crodstone just kind of completely missed the corner there. And you talk about outbreaking yourself, David. He really did outbreak himself. Yeah, it, can't, it, it smacked a little bit of desperation. I thought he would have waited until after the S's because he really, he could have kept it really tidy there and then followed uh, followed him through. But yeah, it looks like um, Crosstown's paid for that now because he, he's really dropping off the pace. Uh, it must have damaged the rear end there, but... Um, yeah, unfortunate for... And also that... there for Tom and Meglek as well, just to um, get back to you, his steering failed. So that's what the issue was for him, his steering completely failed. And that's why he slammed into the tyre barrier, so he is out of the race. We've still got Paul Mills and Barry West scored multiple laps down. They will move up into 14th to 15th positions in the standing, respectively. Tom and Meg, like I say, he's now going to be classified as the last place driver, but we'll keep an eye out as well on Meg, like see um, if, sorry, we won't keep an eye out on Meg, like at all. We'll keep an eye on all the other drivers who have got some damage to their car, see what happens. Todd is kind of running that third position, but he yeah. is slow right now. Yeah, he is. It's, uh, it's a uh, crossed on train right behind him. He's, he's so slow. He just seems to be defending for the last few laps that's to see if he can uh, take the last step on the podium but um, I can't see that happening to be honest the, the other two are just waiting to pounce yeah and this is the sort of thing now Valencia he will probably want to try and set that car up to pass coming into that final corner if he can get the job done be interesting to see if he gets that dirty effect here and Still looks like Crudson's got the advantage through the um, F section of the race track. They're now coming down in towards the final corner. We'll see if Valencia does anything down here. A little bit too far back. He does pose that cloud down to the inside just to kind of unsight Crudson a little bit there. But Valencia, so they come out the final corner. Crudson battling for the third position. Going to put 21 out of 25 laps in the book. Nicholas Lingvist is still your race leader. And these two guys now, in fact, it's a free car battle. You've got Lucas and Etty there as well involved in this. And Crosstown very slow down the exit on turn of two, David. Yeah, just got a little bit sideways. And once uh, that happens in these cars, it's uh, you lose all all speed and momentum. So uh, they're kind of concertining. He's really slow through that undulating section on the through the first section. But uh, yeah, and. Uh, just having a word with uh, Meglik and he's, uh, he's not a happy chappy after that. I think they're going to be having uh, a few words after this race. They will indeed. There might be a little bit like the reaction between Vettel and Webber earlier on today. <laughs> between those two drivers. Very cold between them. 
Make this leg base. I'm going to keep an eye on that in, uh, that in general, which, because they are now trading lap time. Which the last time, 1 minute 20.033, Lingus actually 1 minute 20.398, so come past the start finish line once again. Lingus does a 1 minute 20.474, Gunnar Fritcher just come past the start finish line himself, and he's going to do a 1 minute 20.5, so they are really trading that gap around 6.5 seconds behind them. This is the battle we want to see between Thomas Crodstom, Andres Lentius and Lucas Anetti. They are battling for 3rd, 4th and 5th positions on the racetrack right now. We thought, we thought Crosstown had a little bit of damage. Perhaps he may need to sort that car out a little bit, get it going again. Valencius is stuck behind him. It does look as though that, that Crosstown car really is struggling for grip in the, as he tries to slow that car down. A little bit of oversteers to come out the chicane. A lot of cars have that anyway. But then as they come down the hill, we'll see what will happen now between himself and Valencius. Valencius, let's be honest, he just isn't close enough. And a lot of that still is the aero push. You do need to be a lot faster if you're really going to need to close up and try to make that pass, David. Yeah, you need to be able to take a different line into the corners so you don't get so much of the uh, push here. But yeah, Valencius is going around the outside here, coming into the S's. If he can get a good drive here, here alongside, uh, not quite, but this is going to give him close. a real good run down. But he just backed off a little bit and that's going to allow... Um, uh, Zanetti to have a run on him so he needs to defend as they go down into the uh, last corner here, that big hairpin um, I thought Zanetti might he might just be waiting so we've got a couple more laps to go yet and these three are absolutely going at it Yeah, it's a weird way he tried and do that as well for Lynch, just around the outside at that double apex right hand it didn't work out for him and of course that cost him the opportunity to make the move uh, towards the end of the lap as well Zanetti is just still staying there in weight, however, as Crotton slow again out of turn number two. It's the weakest corner that he is on the racetrack. Behind him as well, Tapano Lanioto and Luna Maria. Tapano Lanioto is actually now putting out a bit of a gap over Luna Maria. They're battling for eight from nine positions on the racetrack, but Maria did catch Lanioto a little bit earlier on. That gap was down to about one second on the racetrack. Lanioto, just having a look at his lap time to see whether he had an off, he didn't. It does look as though that for a period of time, Maria is just a little bit faster on a lap by lap basis, but now it looks as though that has sorted itself out. Let's keep our eye out though on this third and fourth place battle. This time Valencius tries his side to stay on the racetrack as they come through that right hand and back into the S's once again. Gets a good, better drive out of there, however. You see, that gap now just down to about four car lengths as they work themselves now into the right hand and they'll flick it to the left once again. This is where you really are picking up the speed, 150 plus miles an hour. He's a lot closer as he comes down into the half and still not quite close enough to make a look. He will look down to the inside, he will there try go. and go for it. And they are going to touch, not again. Oh. But Lencia spins out, crushed on there. And you can almost say that there's a little bit of karma there, David. Oh, most definitely. He's certainly uh, ambitious from uh, Lentius, but that cave... I think Zanetti could see that happening, so he was just, I'll sit back if these guys can take each other out, and uh, and he's gone off the track there as well after, so he must have some damage to his car, but yeah, this has given uh, Zanetti on the last lap, um, third place, well done yeah. mate. But the white flag is in the hand, there is less than one lap left to go for Nicholas Lindqvist, he currently is working himself into the S's for the final time, left hand. Then they go into the right-hand flick. It's pretty much flat out all the way from here until the final corner of the hairpin. Lingvis is showing an absolutely faultless race once again here in the Classic Grand Prix World Championship Series as they come down, down into the final corner for the final time. The two car of Nicholas Lingvis in the JPS car is going to go back to Lotus Victory Lane as he comes past start for this one to take victory. Gernot Richard will come home in the second position, about seven seconds further back. And then Luca Zanetti in that third position, now working himself into the hairpin. He is going to pretty much be gifted a third position there. And David, that all started when um, all these cars decided that they couldn't do a clean pass. It's so difficult to pass here, though. It's kind of. Especially in these cars, anyway. I mean, you've got high speed, high downforce, twisty track. It, there's never going to be anywhere really to pass. So, it you 
you can't excuse the dive bombing moves, but you understand why they're done because it is the only way. Um, Frustration. Yeah, exactly. Imagine you're just following someone and you know you're that tenth or two. Where do we get the replay from? Them, and there's absolutely nothing that you can do until you send it down the inside. Um, good racing, though. Uh, well done to Zanetti. He no he just waited. He was uh, gifted a little bit of luck. So we'll get our replay up on our screen in a minute. But what happened, and this was on the conclusion of lap number 24, just as they were coming to the white flag, and this is between the um, number 4 car, Andrew Valencius and Thomas Croston, um, sorry, in the 8 car, and and they're into the S's, you say the replay up on your screen momentarily, and Valencius, as I did say, he got a very good run for the S's this time. He's normally a little bit slower as they come out of that double apex right-hander really able to gain the speed through the S's and then as they come down into the final corner Valencius pokes it down the inside but again he wasn't able to slow that car down I always talk about how careful you have to be in that final corner for Valencius it just looked as though he couldn't get that car stopped once he broke that actually you no know, five meters later that car wouldn't get down into the corner on that inside line and you had Croston turning into the corner. Um, Croston, you know, he didn't have to give that much room. He still technically had the corner. But then Valencius goes through, but then also has an incident of his own. Um, as he got a little bit of damage to his race car, was able to complete the final lap, however, despite going off. Luca Zanetti getting that third position. But to run through your final race result, Nicholas Lengvist, with a time of 33 minutes, 33 seconds, claiming race victory. Gernot Fritscher in second, Lucas Zanetti in third, Andres Valencius in fourth, Andrew Ventura in fifth, Thomas Crodston in the sixth position, Mikael Duganon in seventh, Tapano Leniotti in eighth, Nina Maria in ninth, Gary Teal in tenth, Robert Pagani eleventh, uh, Marco Kikia in twelfth, Stephen Ellis in thirteenth, Paul Mills fourteenth, Barry West fifteenth, and then Tom Megleg. The last car, we talked about his retiree earlier on in the race. And that is unfortunately all we have time for for this broadcast. However, we will be back in just about 15 minutes time for the iRacing.com Proto GT Series here on Glacier TV. That will be from Road America. 65 minutes worth of racing, multi-class style. And we'll be back for that at 5.30pm GMT. Until then, from myself, David Ward, Marius Gonnebeck and Yoni Backman will talk to you a little bit later on.